I came with 2,000. 2,000 pounds? Yeah. That's not true. It is. How long did that money sustain you? It lasted, let's say, people ask me where am I from. I'm like, I'm going here. They're like, no, you're not. Because of your assets? Yeah, but I mean, I can't do anything about it. It's cheap compared to London. A 1,000 pounds is like one month rent in London. Yeah. And I paid for a year here. So I was happy. I had enough of London. I was still in the cycle of working and paying rent, and it was draining and depressing knowing that this is where I want to be. I'll give you a few bars. Okay, let's go. That's bars. You really know how to rap. I came to blow. You came to blow. I came to blow. That's it. Okay. Are you liking Ghana so far? The weather. The weather? I have come from the cold. The weather, the food. I love that I can spend more time with my extended family. Mm. I'm getting to know more people. Ghana, I feel more comfortable here. I feel like I'm more secure here. I feel like I can be a better version of myself here. Hello guys, welcome back again to another amazing episode and this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we have dialogue with diaspora and who decided to leave the diaspora, either be in the UK, US and currently living here on the continent or even transitioning into the continent. And today we do have here someone very special. She's a musician. She decided to, you know, embark on the journey here to Ghana and uh, she goes by the name Safo. Without further ado, welcome on the show. Thank you. Madasi, madasi. Madasi. Oh, you speak Chi? Yeah. It's the same. Boko, no, sorry. Boko. Wow, that's, that's good. <laughs> so, Safo is a Ghanaian name. Yeah. So, what's your heritage? I'm Ghanaian. Ghanaian? Um, yeah, both parents are Ghanaian. Safo is my father's name. Father's so name. So, I hold it high. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, talk to me or introduce yourself to the people watching you uh, for the first time. Who are you? Who is Safo? What do you do? Uh, what's your, your uh, career, um, etc.? So, I'm a Sappho NP. I am a musician. I say entrepreneur. I like to dabble in a few other, um, you know, ideas. Yeah. But I'm a musician. Musician. And I've come to Ghana to just progress my journey mm -hmm. and um, connect with my roots. With your roots. Yeah. Why? Why was that so important to you? I mean, you Sappho. I he, I see your accent is a bit UK, right? Yeah. So you were born in the UK. Yeah, I was born and raised in South West London. Okay. Brixton Hill. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've always wanted to come back home to mm -hmm. live in Ghana. I used to tell my parents, "Why did you born me in London? Why didn't you raise me in Ghana?" But what did she say when you say that? They obviously they feel like um, there's opportunity in the West, so they feel they they did well, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I have to come back home and connect because I did feel a disconnect um, in really? London. At what point did you feel that disconnect? I've always felt it, even though I did have a great um, upbringing and stuff. I, it's just this missing piece. Like I wasn't fully calm there, mm. so. Yeah, I've decided to come. Yeah. Yeah. Now, before we, we dive into your story before you came, talk to me about, talk to me about your upbringing. You, you grew up in the, in the same house as your parents? Yeah. Okay, how was that like, you know, you know being a Ghanaian, being born um, in the diaspora, you were going to school, how were people reacting to you? Did you went to all white school or black school? Okay, so I grew up in South West London, mm. Brixton Hill. It was it's a multicultural area. So there's a lot of, we have a lot of Africans and Caribbeans mm -hmm. and other Europeans, but it's mainly black. Mm -hmm. So my upbringing was cool. Even though we were influenced by white culture, mm -hmm. I still had, you know, my parents at home, they would speak, they speak true to each other. They won't speak true to us unless it's insults or <laughs> orders. Yeah. So we we'll still, we still have our, um, we still have the culture, mm -hmm. but when we go outside, it's, you know, it's, it's the streets, it's the mm -hmm. ends. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I grew up, it was cool. Um, that's where I learned more of my music. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Music, but, you know, growing up, what, what did you do for work before the music journey started for you? I've always been in music. Really? So my dad, had a studio in the house. He was into music. Okay. Um, he liked to engineer and mm -hmm. DJ and produce. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I've always had that in me. Um, I did do a bit of graphic design growing mm -hmm. up. 
bit of dance. My mum had an African dance group. Um, yeah, so I was more into the arts and, and music. Where we are currently filming is called Jendu Place. Jendu Place is a co-working space located in East Legon, uh, very close to American House. If you're working remotely in the diaspora, you want somewhere you can plug and play, uh, Jendu Place is a place for you. They have constant electricity, also solar system as a backup, so you never run out of, you know, electric since that is a problem here in Africa so make sure you check them out when you come here tell them you're coming from Web Nation Africa you might get a discount what will you say you you took music seriously and how did Ghana you know kind of merge into this music okay know? let's say primary schools I think we'll say preschool mm -hmm. um, I learned a bit of piano and guitar from your parents from school from school so okay from home it was just I was just listening to a lot of music in the studio, my yeah. dad's studio, yeah. and writing my own songs. And when I got into school, that's when I actually took on learning music. So I learned how to read music and write music. Mm -hmm. um, so primary school was okay. Secondary school, I, that's when I learned trombone. So I did trombone. Mm -hmm. I did band so I played a lot of bands um, had a lot of performances so from there I started to like um, develop myself as an artist mm -hmm. so I'll be writing f um, songs I'll be performing in talent shows and stuff oh really yeah wow. um, so yeah I just built on that and then as I got into like so outside of school there'll be like community um, youth clubs so I'll be doing some music in the youth clubs mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, when I got to college, that's when um, I released my producer and my instrumental EP. So I got more into producing. Um, around that time, my dad um, opened up a music studio. Mm -hmm. So I had, I had my own studio. Oh, really? Where... Um, when I released my instrumental EP, yeah. I got um, artists who... You had artists reach yeah, out to you? Yeah, reach out to me. So I had um, a few people locally who knew that I was, I was seriously doing music. So mm. um, yeah, I had a lot of artists I was working with. So I was producing a lot um, on a lot of songs as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that just mm -hmm. went on. It just went on and on mm -hmm. until... I decided to make the move here. Mm -hmm. So after college, mm -hmm. I tried to go to university because my mom wanted me to go to university, yeah. but I didn't really want to go. I just mm. wanted to focus on my music. Mm. Um, Why didn't you like the university? Because what are they really teaching me that <laughs> I, I don't know? Really? Yeah, because I'm a, I'm a self-taught musician in terms of um, production and engineering. But when I did go to uni, so, so I went to uni three times, mm -hmm. but I didn't complete. So the first one, um, let's say I was 18, I tried to go, but it was in a white area. So I was outside of London, eight hours away from London. Um, I didn't really go to any lectures. Mm. Um, I always have a home set up, so I'll be making my music in my house. But then I kept on coming back to London to work with my artists and stuff. So then I just realised, okay, I can't do this. I told my parents, I can't, I can't do this. How did they react to that? Obviously, they're, uh, they're upset. Mm. My mom, dear, yeah, she wants me to, <laughs> you know, she wanted me to be a lawyer or something. But my dad, he'll always support my music because he mm. likes it. So I had the best of both um, well, opinions. Yeah. But um, small, small like it, it it all mm -hmm. it was all fine mm -hmm. so um yeah yeah so so music i mean what year did you move to ghana again 2022 2022 yeah okay so you moved with the mindset of i'm coming to the continent to, to learn how music is done here to add to my craft or what is that walk me through that i came to blow you came to blow. I came to blow. That's okay. it. Okay. But obviously, yeah. um, to learn about the land, to yeah. just get um, 
get immersed in my culture. Mm-hmm. So since I've come, I've realized that I need to incorporate more Afro sounds mm. to just to appease to the audience, mm-hmm. I, which I enjoy doing. Um, I've joined the, a band as well because I um, I wanted to to get into high life. You joined band. a band here in Ghana. Yeah. Okay. What's the name the of the band? Colors Band. Colors Band. Yeah. Okay. It's a female band. Okay. Um, all female band. Yeah. All female. Um, so that's just yeah. I like to put myself in positions where I can mm-hmm. learn more and um, yeah, just mm-hmm. learn more. What, what did you say that triggered? What did you say triggered your moving? When I actually made the move, yeah, I was I had enough of London. Like I was still in the cycle of working and paying rent and everything, and it was draining and depressing knowing that I want this is where I want to be. So um, I think it was around. 2017 my mum my mum does so we do carnival mm-hmm. um, do you know not in Notting Hill Carnival no so it's a a carnival that happens in London the biggest carnival in London mm. we have a float we're the only African float mm. we've been doing it for since 2007 oh wow so um, my mum we're called Mass Africa the company's mm-hmm. called Mass Africa my mum um, likes to put on carnival in Ghana. Mm-hmm. So the first time, I think it was 2017, we did a Boache festival mm-hmm. in Winningba. That's mm-hmm. um, our hometown. Mm-hmm. So we did a Boache festival. We bought a float. You know what a float is? Explain it. Okay, a float is a. Um, it could be a double decker or um, a car, truck, truck. Okay. So 40 foot, 40 foot a truck. And then you have your DJ on the truck, or we would have performers on the truck. So that truck would parade around the route, the area, and then have masqueraders following, people in costume. Hmm. So that's the whole carnival idea. So we bring that to Ghana. So we've done the um, Abacha Festival. So that was when I first came back in hmm. after many years. Hmm. Um, so I first came up, we came for two weeks mm-hmm. and then um, we came, came up to London and I said, well, I'm back. So I came back to Ghana by myself mm. uh, for a month that December just, just to be here. Mm-hmm. And then from then on, I came back every year. Um, well, not during COVID, mm-hmm. but after I came back, um, 2020, mm-hmm. I think. I stayed for three months, which is the longest, and that was when I released um, my first single in Ghana. What is the name of the Famisa. single? Famisa. Famisa. Famisa, produced oh, wow. by Sam Snee. Okay. Yeah, so um, I shot a video for that as well. When, so I've come back, I said, I'm, when I come back, I'm not going to leave. Mm. So, yeah, so that's after that, that's when I made my move. How have your experience been so far since Touchdown with a mindset that I'm coming to Ghana now and I don't want to move and go back? So, mm-hmm. um, so wow. let's say last year when yeah. I first came, because I didn't want to stay with my family that's here, mm-hmm. I went to rent a place, um, which is cheap, consider. Um, it's cheap um, compared to compared London. To, mm-hmm. It's so cheap. How so much are you paying? I paid a year. It was. It came up to nineteen k. So a thousand pounds. Okay. A thousand pounds is like one month rent in London. Yeah. And I paid for a year here, mm-hmm. so I was happy. But um, so I did that, and then it was unfurnished. I had to furnish it and everything, which is okay. But I thought that when I come. I'll just get stuck into it, but I didn't realize that I had to settle down and mm. actually, you know, get my bearings. Mm. So that's what I realized for the first year. I only spent seven months here because I had to go back to London for Notting Hill Carnival. Mm. It happens in August. Okay. So I was here from November, November till July. 
which so is last year? Last year. Okay. Yeah. So you came November last two years and stayed in till last year, July. July. Okay. And then I came back again in November. Okay. So, so that time, that first seven months, mm -hmm. I just had, that was me just settling in, um, even getting used to the area that I've, I moved to because I moved to East Logon Hills but it's on a rough road like I have a bad rough road I know so <laughs> I had to get used to the area like I yeah. have to I have to take motor mm -hmm. to get to a place where I can order Uber yeah. Yeah. like so I just had to get into the motion mm. um, first so that took up most of my months mm -hmm. even though I was still um recording and stuff I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to mm. but I understood that I just that's just how it goes yeah. this is the choice I've made so cool wow. so that was that mm -hmm. um, first part mm -hmm. so coming back now um, I feel like I can just get more onto what I've come here to do which yeah. is the music yeah and now you've joined a band and now uh, how is it going though now before and after joining the band well, I joined the band last year, but to mm -hmm. be honest, I haven't really been able to go to rehearsals as much as um, I want to, because mm -hmm. it's in Teshi. Okay. And where um, do you live? I live in East Lagoon Hills. Oh, okay. And I've been finding it difficult to get there at this time. Like, it's a lot. Yeah. So, um... I'm just taking it bit by bit. Mm -hmm. what, the easiest thing for me to do is mm -hmm. my um, artistry and production. So I'll just, I'm just trying to piece, piece myself so mm -hmm. that, you know, I'll make time to mm -hmm. actually go to rehearsals. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's there. Yeah. there. So, so walk me through your day-to-day -day life. Like, what do you do to, um, have, you, have you built it, you know, do you have friends? What do you, you know? So... I have I've I've met a, I have friends I'll mm -hmm. say I have friends, mm -hmm. um, but I'm a loner mm -hmm. myself. So day to day, I would if I have a task, let's say I want to complete the song or I, I'm re, I'm working up to a release, I'll just be in my house planning mm -hmm. and then communicating. I could communicate on my phone. I could be doing that's mm -hmm. that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. I might go to an event if. Um, there's something going on, mm -hmm. then I'll go out. Interesting. But yeah. Yeah. Are you are you liking Ghana so far? I saw your TikTok video. Yeah. Uh, I'm a dash friend, and I mean I'll play it so the people watching uh, can. How do you how do you deal with stereotypes like that? Um, I don't mind because yeah. uh, actually I used to think I used to be like people ask me where am I from. I'm mm -hmm. like I'm Ghanaian. They're like no you're not. Because like, of your accent? Yeah, but I mean, I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can, but... So I've just, like... I've just gotten used to it. I don't mm -hmm. mind at mm -hmm. all. I've, mm -hmm. That's why I did the TikTok, because I'm embracing the fact that, okay, I am born overseas, and, okay, that's just where it is, but mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And this is actually what I represent, so mm -hmm. I have to just... You know, what are the three most interesting thing about Ghana for you? What you like about Ghana? Well, the weather. The weather. Obviously, I've okay. come from the cold, so the weather, the food. Food. Um, yeah, and I love that I can spend more time with my extended family. Mm. I'm getting to know more people, and yeah, I'm just seeing the dynamics because. I'm used to hearing about my family from London, mm -hmm. but now I'm in here, I'm seeing everybody and I'm, yeah, I'm mm. like, okay. And you appreciate that more. Yeah, I love it, I love it. When you were in the UK, you didn't have access to your family like that. Were you, your family, your mom and dad, was the only family there in the UK or they had cousins and other things? Um, we have a few um, on both sides. So my mom's brother is in mm -hmm. the UK. My grandma, so my mom's mom was in, both my grandmas were in UK as well. Mm -hmm. um, my dad's siblings are... So I have cousins and mm -hmm. stuff there. But I have a lot more here mm -hmm. as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. When you, if your mom is watching right now, <laughs> what do you think she would say you know, to you? Or to, 
she would Certain. feel about you. She would be happy that I'm yeah. here talking and yeah. 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 Do you think she's gonna be like, okay, I'm supporting her now? Now that you she's, <laughs> no, she started. She she's supporting me. Yeah. She's been supporting me for a few years now. Okay. When she realized that, okay, this is I'm actually doing what yeah. I want to do, mm-hmm. and I'm happy. So. Mm-hmm. She's my biggest fan now. Oh, I like that. How did your friends react to you saying that I'm leaving this job that I'm doing in the UK to go do my music or follow my, my path in so, Ghana? Obviously, they're like, why am I going? Nah. Mm-hmm. But um, they always know, I've always been vocal that I, I don't want to be here. I want to be in Ghana. So I think they were surprised, mm-hmm. but not surprised. Really? Yeah. What, what kind of job were you doing in the UK now? Well, I didn't really like to work. So, um, I think I got my first job when I was 19. Um, what job was it? I was working, I think it was, it's called Zoe's Garner Kitchen. So okay. this- uh, You were cooking food? I was the I was a waitress. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I, I do like the food industry. I I've, I I do have plans of opening a restaurant and stuff. Really here in Ghana. So even in in London, but mm. so I, I like to take jobs that I can benefit from. Either learn some a trade that I want to get into, or yeah. So that was my first job. I don't stay in jobs for long unless I like it. <laughs> so why? Because I can't, I can't deal with anything. I can't. Really? I can't. Like, I'd rather just have my small money and stay in my school, my corner and survive than go and stress my life. So, um, that was my first job. I think after that, I did a bit of, I like to do like volunteering and stuff. So, mm-hmm. I like to work with children. Um, children? Yeah. Okay. I, I had a few years where I was, um, volunteering uh, in music, teaching children, mm-hmm. um, and then working with special needs children, just looking after them. Okay. Um, but then I got a job. So when I was planning to move to Ghana, um, I think it was 2017, mm-hmm. when I got a job in Asafo. Asafo? Asafo, it's a, Asafo. It's a Ghana, no. It's a restaurant in London, a Ghanaian okay. restaurant in London. Okay. It's like in my area. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I took the job because I wanted to sharpen my chi and just be in that environment. Really? Yeah. So it was fun. I was there for two years, so mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. So okay. I had a suffer and I did a bit of agency work mm-hmm. where um, I was working in bars and festivals just behind the bar mm-hmm. um, yeah and the last job before that um, that helped me come to Ghana I was doing delivery driving for um, delivery driving? yeah I was driving the big big vans really? yeah wow for um, Royal Mail Royal so I was Mail. delivering I had fun I had fun wow yeah. that's amazing now I mean once one would say like what do you do to prepare yourself for a journey like Ghana or even financially? How did you prepare yourself? How much money would you say you embarked on this journey to Ghana with? So that delivery job, yeah, yeah. that's the job that's um, supported me to come to Ghana. So it was, a, it was quite a high paying job mm-hmm. considering. Um, so it was enough for me to get my house, get my furniture, transport just it was enough to support me for let's say a year Mm -hmm. in Ghana Mm -hmm. so I did that when I went back to London um, for that four months I did it again Mm -hmm. so it supported me again for this day Wow! but yeah interesting well you're very hard working from the stories you've said but you don't like working for people I don't (laughs) well you know what was the first music you dropped though um you say it was instrumental Okay, that's the first um, um, tape as a producer. Mm-hmm. It's called New Process. New Process, yeah. okay. EP. Um, I've dropped that when I was 17. Um, but before that, I have some songs outside on, on YouTube. Mm. But 
It's just as a baby. Oh, uh, so you, <laughs> you don't you don't really. I don't promote it. Really. I go and watch it for myself. You don't, you don't, don't watch it. I go and watch it, okay, but I okay. don't promote it. Okay, so talk to me about your new music that you've released recently and how people watching can find it. You know, or what inspired you to write those those music. Okay, so the new song that I've released is mm. called God Knows. God Knows. It's produced by Mr. Brown Beats. Mm-hmm. So how I, I, I recorded a song last year um, before I, I went to UK. So I mm-hmm. recorded it around June. Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. So I met D Crime. Mm-hmm. I met him in January last year, mm-hmm. December. Mm-hmm. Um, I, did a, I was on a tour with Black Cat GH. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's how I got into contact with D Crime. And then he, we had a few studio sessions. So during one of the sessions, I made God Knows with Mr. Brown Beat. So D Crime actually sponsored that track. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so, um, so I've released it. I released it on March the 15th. Mm-hmm. Of what year? This year. This year, okay. I've, it's, a lot's been going on, mm-hmm. but I finally got it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a video coming out as well for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. It's on all platforms, um, Spotify, YouTube, um, Boomplay, mm-hmm. Insta, Snapchat, and Audio Mac. Mm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. you can go and check it out. You can find the music on Instagram? Yeah, on when you click on oh, really? and add music. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. How has it been like trying to co- like collaborate with musicians here in Ghana? Um... Uh, it's okay. Mm, it's okay? Yeah. That means I, it's not that great? It's not... I'm not really... Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't really put in the work to collaborate okay. with people. I feel like I need a manager for that. Really? Yeah. Because I'm already doing everything myself. So production. Production, promotion, mm-hmm. marketing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. But I do get... Um, so I was doing a series on Instagram and TikTok where I was just making beats. What did I make today? So I was just making, I was just putting it up. I just, I was just, I had an idea for content, so mm-hmm. I just did it. Um, but I had good response. Like people were contacting me; they wanted to collaborate and stuff. So, wow. I guess it's easy once I'm, if I'm putting myself out there, it's easy to get collaborations. Yeah. Interesting. Can we do a beat for Web Nation Africa? <laughs> yeah, of course. For that intro, we can, we can, we I can, can make get a little, it. I can make a little beat, yeah. Really? How yeah. much is it going to cost us? We could talk about that later. Yeah. I like that. I like that. If you, if you have a message, though, for people watching you, a final message um, to, you know, friends and family, whatever that may be, what would that message be? Just, um, I'll say this, it might be cliche, but yeah, just... Believe in yourself and God is your best friend. Mm. So, yeah. Interesting. God is your best friend? Yeah. Why, why do you prefer to be a loner, though? In Ghana, somewhere, society, like, we have a lot of society, right? Community, sorry, community here, where everybody's in your business. People will try to drag you into going out, even if you don't want to. Yeah. Why are you still a loner in Ghana? Why? Um, I mean, I still go out if if mm. if there's opportunities. I mean, you say you go out to the beach to sit alone, right? Yeah. I mean, apart from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I haven't just I haven't met enough people to be mm-hmm. going out a lot, mm. and I'm used to having my own space and being secluded. So that's why I'm, I still have I still have that about me, mm. which I don't want to lose, but. I do want to come, I do want to um, open up more. Mm. So, and I believe Ghana is the best place for me to do that. Really? Yeah. Well, why don't you think UK could have done that for you though? Okay. Yeah. Because it's the West. Yeah. I feel like um, there's certain, okay, even Ghana has its things, but (laughs) the West is like, the culture is is spoiled. Mm. And... If I was to immerse myself more into it, I'd, I wouldn't have liked the path that I would be going down. Mm. So, Ghana, I feel more comfortable here. I feel like 
I feel like I'm more secure here. And yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like I can be a better version of myself here. Really? In Ghana? Yeah. Compared to the UK? Did yeah. you experience kind of racism and stuff like that um, in the UK? I was asked this question the other day. Mm. Maybe, but I, I wouldn't be aware. Mm. Okay, I might have been aware, but I, I wouldn't really care. I might be... You didn't pay no attention to it. I don't pay it. attention to it. And even if it happened, mm -hmm. like, I'll probably uh, respond. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, and again, the area I was, I, was, I was from, it wasn't like that. When I do travel outside of London, maybe I get the looks and things like that, but I haven't experienced anything harsh. Mm, interesting. Now, let's, let's come back to the symbols. The one you have in your neck is the Jinami symbol. Yeah. You said that's your second favorite? One of your second favorite? It's, it's my first favorite. First favorite, okay. Yeah, it's okay. my favorite. You didn't mention about Akofena and you fighting and stuff. What does it mean to you? Akofena. And how do you relate to that Akofena? Akofena, okay. So, this year, mm -hmm. um, I felt like I'm at war. Mm. So, I'm at war with, let's say, my past self. Um, I'm at, yeah, I'm at war with, my, with myself. I'm trying to, again, be the better version of myself. So, there are some habits and stuff that I need to cut off and there's some habits that I need to adopt and it's a battle that I haven't I've been I've been fighting it for a while mm. but I, I'm aware of it now mm. that okay I'm actually I, um, I'm on this I'm in this war but mm -hmm. I'm winning mm -hmm. but I'm you know we're getting to the the yeah. glory yeah the, like the finish line yeah something like that so yeah. interesting Interesting. Give advice to people like who want to even follow your journey. You know, like just jumping out of UK and coming to Ghana to follow your music, right? Yeah. If someone watching this is like, oh, I would like to be like that. What would be the watch outs advice that you give to those people before they embark on a journey? Um, I would say you should do it definitely, mm -hmm. but have your plan mm -hmm. um, even if it's just a little plan mm -hmm. have it because when you come here mm -hmm. it, will, it will be something else but um, be open minded as well because you're going to come and learn um, obviously have have some money you don't have to have too much like mm -hmm. people think they need a lot like really? thousands, yeah. Just to even come on holiday, they think they need a thousand. How much money do you, do they, do you think they need? Um, I came with, <laughs> let's say, two thousand pounds. <laughs> and I, but I know how to manage money, and I can live off little, little. So two thousand pounds. Yeah, half of it went to my house. The other half I used to sustain. Myself. In no way. I'm okay. Two thousand pounds. Yeah. That's not true. It is. How long did that money sustain you? Um. Okay. That lasted, let's say, five months. Obviously, if you have a little bit coming in mm -hmm. after that, that will help. Maybe a mm -hmm. few hundreds, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I'll say that's a good starting point. If you, mm -hmm. if you're coming for the minimal life. Mm -hmm. That's okay, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, if you're coming to, you know, you want to go to, you want to live in East Lagoon, you want to go party here, you want to do that, then obviously you need more money. Mm. You but don't you go to party? Pardon? You don't party? I do, but I can budget. I okay. don't need to spend too much outside, and I don't really need to pay too much outside. Interesting. Um, so yeah, I'll just say, just do it. Don't listen to anybody that tells you you can't do it. You can't come out here because you can. Yeah. Who, who was the one, the most on the top of the list telling you that you can make it in your old trajectory? Who was that person? Who? Put them on blast. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> but oh. which group of people were tend to, you know, kind of pull you back the most? Um... 
To be honest. Friendship group, classmates, no, co-workers. They can't, friendships can't really. Family members. It'll be family, it'll have to be family mm -hmm. that has the most influence, I'll say, in my life in mm -hmm. general, because I care about them a lot. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I'm, um, yeah. Interesting. I like that. What, I mean, once again, if I want to listen to your music, can you give us like a, a line or something like that for people to see how powerful your voice is so that you can just go find your music? Okay, I'll give you a few bars of God Knows. Okay. Let's go. I hope you're feeling good about yourself during the day and any negativity that come you do away with calibrate and tune up on your stay. Shouldn't have pay, shouldn't be pay, shouldn't. Nothing is impossible today when you got the backing from the highest to the great. So I said, be a tool, no, I'm too much in the yay, but I'm proud to just pray when you want to make it away. I like that. That's Thank bars. You. you really know how to rap. Oh, yeah. Can you be my ghostwriter? Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> I really want to release, guys, if you see me do music, don't blame me. I'm inspired. I want to release a music this year and shoot a music video for it. That's cool. Yeah, we can but work I don't know how to write lyrics. We can, we can work on that. We can make it work. No, no problem. I like that. From this point moving forward, I'm a musician. I want to ask, you You know, young, your age, I don't want to put your age on blast, but okay. you don't mind? 28 don't mind. years old. Yeah. Moved from the UK, young black woman. Beautiful. Um, you. How are the Ghanaian men treat, treating you? And um, Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Are you single, by the way? I'm single. Okay. And I do want a husband and okay. a family. Yeah. But the men here... What happened to the men? Talk about, I mean, let's I talk don't, about I it. Don't, I haven't... Um, Have you been on dates? I haven't. I Why? haven't. I'm just to myself, but mm. I'm not... I can't... I don't easily... Like, Open up easily like that. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like now I have to... My standards have to be high mm. high in the sense that i'm not just gonna go on a date with any guy um what is the type of describe the type of man though my type of man yeah i just want someone who's ambitious ambitious someone okay. who wants a family wants a wife um i'll just say that for now okay so you you you, you are a traditional woman and you want a traditional man yeah i like that now, viewers, if you're watching this and you fit that category, you know what to do. What's your social medias and how can people find you? Uh, Suffer NP, so, and everything. YouTube, Insta, yeah. I like that. Facebook. I'm, and Facebook, too. Yeah. So I'm going to put a link in the description that will lead to the streaming platform as well as her social media. You know, go stream her music, God knows. Uh, you know, come comment down below how you feel about the music. You know, give feedback to her so she can improve, become better. And uh, if it's your first time here, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe. YouTube said 80% of you guys watching love the video, but forget to subscribe. Our goal for this year is to get 100,000 subscribers. You know, by you subscribing, you're helping us get there quickly. So please do so. And, uh, you know, share to friends and family so they can enjoy this episode too. So without further ado, uh, can we say bye-bye to the people watching? Yep. All right, peace out. Bye. Bye.